Good morning, welcome to the channel. We are back at the bathroom renovation. The tile has set, it's been a few days so I can go ahead and begin grouting. We're gonna pretty much jump straight into it. Here's the space again. The last few days I've been working at this job, so today we'll jump into the grout. Okay, I finished removing all the spacers. I just pulled them out, it's pretty easy. Then I gotta clean up those grout joints, which I usually just do with my knife. That is so my grout, when I push my grout in, the mortar behind doesn't come through or anything and to maintain a proper depth of my grout so it actually holds in place. So I went ahead and cleaned all of those out. Gave it a wipe to get rid of any of that loose mortar or dust that was left behind, make sure the tiles are clean before I go ahead and begin grouting. For the grout, I'll be using the Mapi Ultra Color Plus FA. It's a fast setting grout that dries within three to four hours before foot traffic and also says it doesn't require a sealant. And that's not because one is built in, but because it's a it's neither a non-sanded or sanded grout. It's less porous, and therefore the cells are tighter together, so it's less likely less likely to let water through. And if you haven't watched previous videos and are just watching this one, we've used concrete board as a tile backer. We've used Red Guard as our waterproof membrane, and then we've used just these four by twelve subway tiles for our tiles, and we'll be using this for the grout to match the black fixtures that they have going on in this bathroom. So this stuff does set really quick. Like I said, there's only 10, 15 minutes of working time once you spread it onto the tile. So I won't be filming too much of that. I'll do a time lapse or something so you can see the process, but I'll be focused on doing that. If you're unfamiliar with grouting as a whole, I wouldn't recommend using this stuff as your first guinea pig, as it were. I would probably use a sand and grout that's a little bit more longer time cure time so you can play with it a little more. But we'll be using this because we gotta get done. And once I've used it a few times, I actually prefer it a bit more than the, the traditional grouts. Okay, buckets. So the things I wanna make sure I have on hand is a couple buckets of clean water. There's a lot of cleaning involved with this. So with any grouting, you wanna make sure you follow the process and aren't stuck with, stuck with excessive buffing and cleaning after the fact. So got a couple buckets of clean water, a couple sponges, my float, just a rubber float, and then some microfiber cloths to get rid of the haze that's left behind after it dries. Kind of buff it off before uh, silicone. Okay, got the first batch of grout mixed up. Now I just apply it to the walls. Easy. Here it is here. And it's ready to be applied right away. Now once I spread it, I only have, again, about 15, 20 minutes until those joints firm up and then I go back and clean it. So I might be able to do this whole wall. I haven't grouted in a while, so I might just do half of it, lay it safe. It's very black. I focus on just getting it on the wall first. I go at it at different angles. On a 45, if you go straight in, you're just gonna fall into that joint. Just what you don't wanna do. Don't worry, there is plastic in this tub. So it's protected. And then once it's on the wall, I go back on about a 45, wipe it off as best I can. And then that's that. So it's on the wall, I just wait for those joints to firm up and I can go back and get rid of that haze with the sponge and it should be good to go. I'm gonna put you on a time lapse. I gotta keep going here. <laughs> okay, so I got the grout on both end walls. After I've gone over it with the float, pushed it into the cracks and wiped it clean on a 45-ish degree angle with the float, I wait for the joints to firm up. And then I go ahead and take a damp sponge, wipe it down, which I've already done. Wait a couple more minutes, go back with my microfiber cloth, wipe that excess off. And it's just to get 
rid of the bulk that's left behind from the sponge because the sponge can't pick it all up. And then once it's dry, I'll buff it off with a dry microfiber cloth as well. You don't want to miss this step, otherwise you'll spend a lot of time cleaning. So I've already done that to this side and about 15 minutes have gone by, so I'm actually going to go over it now with a clean microfiber cloth and just uh, do this. And the fibers on the cloth just pick up any and every little bit of haze. And that grout's done. So I'm going to tackle this big wall behind me. I'll get back to you with the report. The only stuff that's really left is going over and making sure everything's full. There's not any bubbles or um, places I've missed. And make sure to do a good cleanup job in preparation for the silicone. <laughs> Okay, so just finished up the grouting in the back wall there. To give you an idea how fast this stuff dries, it's only been five minutes after grouting that and buffing it clean. The stuff in the bucket is already hard, so it gives you an idea how much working time you actually have with it on the wall. But everything's clean, everything's buffed off that haze that the grout leaves behind. I got rid of that with my cloth. We're all ready to go for silicone. Cleaned up everything. Basically we'll be siliconing anywhere there's a change of plane, especially in the corners mainly. So inside the tile corner and inside where the tub meets the tile and then the vertical sides of the tub as well. Just because grout doesn't have the ability to maintain flex over time. So silicone, silicone does a better job in that. We'll jump into the future tomorrow and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, we're back. It's next morning. We're ready to begin siliconing. I already did most of the cleanup yesterday, which just entailed wiping everything down, making sure the haze was off the tile, as well as any loose grout pieces that were left behind. So we are ready to go. And what we'll be using is the Mapsol T silicone. It's 100% silicone. And it is actually rated for water submersion silicone. So if you're doing a pool or something, it would be rated for that. So it's a bit of overkill for this, but it is just the better product to use. So the trick is that after you apply that silicone, wipe it with your finger and then pull the tape off right away before it skins over you. Maybe you only have a few minutes to do that, so that's why I'm going section by section. We're going to carry on, finish this up, and I'll give you the overall finished product in a few seconds. Okay, we're all finished up here. I finished the silicone. We'll wait 24 hours before uh, the shower is used. And just a couple other small things I did, so we will be back at this shop to finish those up. But that'll do it for today's video, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.